Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today I'm going to be covering the case of Joseph Metheny. I think out of all cases I've covered, this is the top one that just completely shocked me. I could not believe it. It just got worse and worse and worse. Like it did not stop getting worse until the very end. I do just want to say that everything I've found is via media sources and the internet. I do believe everything to be true, but it is the internet. So the internet can be full of things. Joseph Roy Metheny was born on the 2nd of March 1954 in Baltimore, USA, which just reminds me of Hairspray, you know that song that goes, good morning, Baltimore. Anyway, according to Joseph's mum, he had a pretty good childhood. She did have six kids, so money never came easy to the Metheny family, but she tried her hardest to make it work. Joseph's mother had to work as a barmaid, a food truck driver, and a waitress just to make ends meet. But nevertheless, from her point of view, the children had a good upbringing, they always had a roof over their head, and they always had a hot meal. But Joseph, on the other hand, did not remember his upbringing to be like this. In fact, it was quite the opposite. He remembers being neglected and being depressed, and when he was just six years old, his alcoholic father died in a car crash. Joe recalls his mother working a lot, but of course she was a widow of six children, and like I said, she tried to make ends meet, but he just remembers being passed around from family to family. It's hard to know which to believe because they're so contrasted. But either way, Joseph was an above average student and he finished school. And at the age of 18, 19, he joined the army. And when Joe was in the army, he became addicted to heroin. Joe's mother would hear from Joe every so often when he was away. And she described him saying that he just kept drifting further and further away. I think the worst thing to ever happen to him was the drugs. It's a sad, sad story, which must be so upsetting for the mum to watch her son slowly deteriorate. I struggled to find something with Joe in the army. There's not a lot documented, but over time he ended up leaving or he got discharged because of his drug addiction. So he ended up moving back to Baltimore, his hometown, and was basically back to square one. Well, in a worse position than square one. Because now he was drug dependent, he cut off all his family, which meaning, in turn, he was homeless. I mean, it's not really looking good for Joe at this point, but he tries to make the best out of a bad situation ish and he mingles with the local homeless community i don't know why i said making the best out of that situation although homeless joe did have a job he was a forklift driver and a truck driver and every payday he would blow his wages on heroin crack cocaine and go into bars joe was quite well known in the community that he mingled with and i mean he's not hard to remember he's literally six foot one and weighed 400 pounds which for us in England that's 28 stone which is literally double his weight for someone of that size he also went by the name tiny which is literally humorous finest let's be honest but anyway back to the case like I said he was quite well known in the community he would hang around with and he started making friends and this is where he met a girl I don't know her name because a lot of the people in this case aren't actually named she too had a drug addiction and I believe she may have been homeless as well but nevertheless, they saved up and they got a house and they had a baby and Joe really settled into family life. And nothing in Joe's life was particularly noted for six years, but what came next was unimaginable. So it all began the night of July 1994. Joe had done overtime that night and when he returned home, he walked into his family house and everything was gone. I'm talking the furniture, pictures, like everything in the house was gone. It was empty including his girlfriend and his six-year-old son. Joe was upset, of course, but not by his girlfriend leaving. Oh no, he described her as a worthless piece of shit and he would have paid her to leave. Joe's concerns were about his son. He knew that his now ex-girlfriend was very drug dependent and didn't have the capability to take good care of him. And unfortunately, Joe was right. His son got put into care just six months later for neglect and abuse. And for Joe's ex-girlfriend, she had run away with a man and this man basically just pimped her out. And of course, that meant that she was in no state to look after this child. I feel like that was a lot of unstructured information. So to sum it up, basically Joe came home, no family, no son, no girlfriend. His girlfriend had run across town with another man. The man pimped her out and then the son got taken off her. I hope that made sense previously anyway. 
So Joe soon found out about all of this and he was furious. His son had gone into the care system and because of Joe's previous criminal history, he was not able to get him out. So he decided to take out revenge on his ex. So Joe asked around the homeless community where he can find his ex-girlfriend and someone told him that she was under a bridge getting high with two homeless men. So Joe wasted no time in heading down there, but by the time he got there, his ex-girlfriend had already left, and at this point, it was just the two homeless men. And in Joe's very words, he said, they were passed out on some stinky mattress, that's where they were when I left, except they were dead from being chopped up. Joe literally went under that bridge and chopped up two men with an axe that he found nearby because he believed that they weren't given over information on where his ex-girlfriend was. Like I said previously, Joe was a very frequent user of drugs, so I believe his thoughts were very out of touch with reality. So even though his actions are heinous, he does not process it like that. But Joe's night was not over. He still wanted to know the whereabouts of his ex and his actions are just insane. So he continues looking under this bridge for people who might have information on where his ex-girlfriend is. And the first person he bumps into is what he describes, his own words, as a crack whore. You can literally just feel his respect for women, like just radiate him. So Joe gave this woman drugs in hopes that she would start spilling information about where his ex-girlfriend was, but she doesn't. She didn't know anything. And that was not good for Joe. He was not happy about this. He strongly believed that she was keeping the information from him. So what does he do? He decides to beat her, rape her and murder her. I don't know whether he thinks that's just the appropriate response, like... And what happens next, I'll read to you in Joe's words because it's just so shocking the way he puts it. So his words, remember. I put her in some bushes and led the second bitch down there. He meant under the bridge. Did the same to her as I did the last one. He literally has no respect, like not even just the women at this point, like just humans in general. Once he had killed the second woman, he tried to throw her in the bush like he did the first one. But that's when he got spotted. An older man was fishing by the river and heard the commotion. So he looked up and that's when him and Joe just locked eyes. Joe just couldn't have anyone being a witness. So he grabbed a steel pipe that was close by and hit the man over the head and killed him instantly. Which is so sad because all the people that he'd killed that night were just people in the wrong place at the wrong time. The killings weren't personal to these people, it was just that he wanted information and these people just couldn't provide it. And now Joe was left with all these bodies. He put the two women and the man in the river and weighted them down with rocks. He washed himself off because he was covered in blood and evidence. And then after committing five murders, he just went home. He just carried on a normal life. And then that was it for almost three weeks, three weeks, until police arrested Joe on suspicion of the murder of the two homeless men on the mattress that were chopped up. Joe was locked up in a cell for 18 months awaiting trial. And when the trial finally came around, the worst case scenario happened. Joe was set free. There wasn't enough evidence to charge him of the murder of the two men. So he just got to walk free and have his freedom and unknown to everyone, he'd murdered the three people as well. Now free, Joseph returned to his job as a forklift driver and on the yard, there was like a trailer caravan thing and he offered to his boss that if he lived there, he'll keep eye on the yard the whole time. He'll basically be like an extra security for free. So his boss agreed and Joe moved in, but that wasn't the real reason why Joe wanted to live in this caravan. The workyard was on a dead end road and was isolated. So in Joe's eyes, this was perfect for murder. And he wasn't even murdering for his ex anymore. He was just murdering for the thrill of it. His plan was to lure sex workers into the trailer with promise of drugs. And when they came in, he would brutally attack them and murder them. And unfortunately, this happened to two women. And once Joe had committed these horrific murders, it gets worse. He would chop up their bodies and put the flesh in Tupperware and freeze it. And it keeps getting worse. He opened up a beef pit on his workyard and he would mix beef, pork and human flesh, the human flesh from the Tupperware, He would mix it all together and serve it in sandwiches to his co-workers. They were unknowingly eating human meat. Like, honestly, I want to vomit. 
Joe has got to be so messed up mentally to not only brutally murder these women, but then serve it to people and watch them eat it like they're unknowingly eating human flesh. That is the worst thing I've ever read. So after this whole ordeal, Joe ran out of his special meat, as he called it. So he decided to lure in another victim. His next victim was called Rita. He lured her in again on the premise of drugs. And when she got in the caravan, he started beating her and taking off her clothes. She started screaming and Joe was just laughing in her face. He turned his back for a split second to grab something behind him and Rita seen the opportunity and ran. She bolted out of the trailer and ran into the workyard, but the fences were 10 feet high with barbed wire on the top of them. But she had to act fast. Joe was right on her tail trying to catch her. She saw some pallets stacked up high enough for her to be able to climb them and jump the fence. And she did it. Her adrenaline must have been going like crazy and she escaped Joseph Metheny. She ran to the main road and alerted a car who took her in and took her to a safe place where she could alert the police. Joe knew he messed up his plan and he knew the police would be there any minute. He decided not to escape but simply walk into his trailer, pick up his clothes and unlock the main gate to the workyard. And as he was doing this, the police were just pulling in and they drew their guns on him and he dropped to the ground with his hands up. And Joseph Metheny was finally stopped because of this brave woman. And in his questioning, he confessed to everything, even the murders under the bridge. He showed the police where all the remains and all the bodies were. He admitted that the only thing he felt bad about was not being able to murder the two people that he originally set out to get revenge on. In his words, he didn't get to murder the two motherfuckers he was really after, his ex-old lady and the bastard she hooked up with. That was his only regret. He murdered eight people, an attempted murder, and fed human flesh to innocent people. But his only regret was that he missed two people off that he wanted to murder originally. There's so much wrong with this man. So much, so much wrong. Joseph had multiple trials for his multiple murders. And one of the things he did decide to say was that he won't be apologising for any of the murders because he doesn't feel bad about it. If he did apologise, he'd be lying because he enjoyed it. He is honestly a delight. Joseph Metheny was sentenced to death in 1998 which is what he was begging for in his court trial and then in 2000 his sentence was changed to no longer death but two life sentences without the possibility of parole. I'm not sure why it was changed some people said he appealed it which is weird because he was begging for it in court um, but I don't know what the situation was to why it changed and then 17 years later in 2016 or 2017 Joseph Metheny was found dead in his cell at the age of 64. His death was in that investigation, but I was unable to find what happened, but he's dead, so. Anyway, thank you for watching this case. I feel like I went really fast through this case and I probably talked at 100 miles an hour, but if you made it this far, then thank you. I don't know why I gave you a thumbs up. Oh. Oh my god. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because honestly I really appreciate it when people show love to my channel. If you want to see some more of my videos I'll put them here somewhere and yeah I'll see you in my next case. Bye!